Well, hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our class video about isosceles triangles. Our learning goal for this video is that you'll be able to describe the properties of isosceles triangles and apply them to solve problems. Okay, so what is an isosceles triangle anyway? An isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. Note that I said at least two. That means it could have three congruent sides as well. So an equilateral triangle that has three congruent sides also counts as isosceles. That'll be important for later. Okay, so now let's talk about the characteristics of an isosceles triangle. Before we can really talk about that though, you kind of need to know what some things are called in an isosceles triangle. So let's define some terms. Okay, so there are three sides to the triangle, obviously, and they have specific names. The two congruent sides are called the legs. So we have two legs on either side. Okay, then the other one is called the base. Note that the base of an isosceles triangle, as pictured here, is on the bottom. But it is also quite possible for me to draw the isosceles triangle upside down, and that is still counted as the base. The base is just the side that's not the two legs. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Okay, then there's three angles in the isosceles triangle. The angles that are next to the base are called base angles. So we have one base angle here, and we have one base angle here. Okay. The other angle is called the vertex angle. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's look at the isosceles triangle theorem. The isosceles triangle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, hence making it isosceles, then the angles opposite those sides, the base angles, are congruent. Okay, just so you get the idea of what the, the I mean by opposite. So the angle that's opposite from this side is that base angle, and the angle that's opposite from that congruent side is the other base angle. According to the isosceles triangle theorem, those base angles are congruent. So if the legs are congruent, we know that the two base angles are congruent. Okay, that applies for all isosceles triangles. Now, it also just so happens that the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem is also true. Can you think of what that might be? Well, here we go. The converse of the isosceles triangle theorem says, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Do you see how it was switched from the original? In the original isosceles triangle theorem, we're given that the two sides are congruent, and we're then privy to the knowledge that the angles are congruent. In the converse, it's the reverse. If here we know we are given that the two angles are congruent. If we know that, then we know that the two sides are congruent. Okay, so let's apply this to a couple examples. In these examples, we'll find the values of x and y. These are just basic isosceles triangles. Okay? In example one, we know that this x is another base angle. So therefore, it has to be congruent to the other. So the value of x must be 82. How could I find the value of y? Well, it's still a triangle. The sum of the angles has to be 180, right? So if I add 82 and 82, that's going to get me 164. And then if I subtract 164 from 180, that would give me 16. Okay, so y is 16 degrees. There. 
All right, what about for the other example? Here, once again, I know the base angles are congruent. So we know the values for x and y are going to be the same. How can I figure those out? Well, consider that still, again, the triangle has to have angles that add to 180. So if I subtract the 40 degrees that I have from the 180, then I'm left with 140 degrees. That 140 degrees must be split between x and y, and because they're congruent, it must be split evenly. So therefore, if I divide 140 by 2, that will get me 70. Okay, so then I know that both x and y are 70 degrees. Of course, we know we can't leave it at just numbers, right? If you know me, we know we're going to add some algebra to this. Okay, so how could we find the values of x and y in example 3? Okay, which angles are the base angles? They're the ones opposite the congruent sides. So that means the two angles contain, containing an expression with x are congruent. If those two angles are congruent, they're the same, and their measures must be equal. So I can say that 2x plus 30 is equal to 4x minus 10. I can solve that for x. Okay, I'll subtract 2x from both sides and simultaneously add 10 to both sides. Okay, meaning those will cancel. And I'm now left with 2x equals 40. Okay, dividing both sides by 2, I would get a value of x that is 20. Okay, one down, one to go. So, how can I figure out the value of y? Well, first it might be helpful to know what the measures of the base angles are. So if I plug in the value for x, 4 times 20 minus 10, that means this angle is 70 degrees. Likewise up here, 2 times 20 plus 30, that also comes out to be 70 degrees. That's confirmation that we did our algebra right. If that doesn't come out to be the same number, then we know we made a mistake. Okay, so if both of these angles are 70, then how can I get y? Well, it has to add up to 180, doesn't it? So 70 and 70 makes 140. Take that away from 180, and we have 40 degrees. Therefore, our value for y is 40 degrees. There. All right, so I guess I will see you guys in class. That's it for this video.